Hey, welcome to another episode of Armchair Architects. Today, we're going to talk about platforms. Are you building one? Do you need one? Are you concerned that it might not succeed? Well, we're going to talk to our architects today about that. And when we're done, what I recommend you do is check out the links below and you subscribe to our channel. So let's get right to it and talk to our architects. <laughs> Hey, well, it's so good to see you two again. Um, so we've been getting these questions in about platforms. Um, people want to know when should they build them? What do they have to think about with them? What's going on with them? Can we just start off our conversation with like a 30 second level set about what we mean about building a platform? Just so we're clear. Can either one of you take that answer? Yeah, why don't I start um, and give my own opinion? Um, so a, a platform to me is a, a collection of technical capabilities that organizations have, which are intended to solve line of business problems. So typically in medium to large size organizations, an or, a, a company in the IT department will build a big data platform, an application hosting platform, an inner source platform with the goal of lines of business with specific value to be gained from this platform that it would actually help them in their jobs, bring ROI and make their lives a lot easier. Uh, so when we say platforms, it's usually an assembly or a collection of technologies. Some of them are really well engineered and it's managed like a product and some are not. Yeah, I would, I would add one key differentiation to what we have done before. The reason why platforms are becoming key to the success for a lot of companies is that they host many or multiple uh, business applications. Uh, in the past, we used to build a technology stack per business application and deploy it, maintain it as a unit. What we're now starting to see is that people are saying, no, 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 I want to have a platform and we can talk more about what a platform constitutes, but I wanted to run multiple applications because I run multiple applications. I do not want to maintain a stack per application. And that really started when you think about it with the hypervisor. The hypervisor for, for the first time broke the link between hardware and software. Before that, you had to have the operating system run directly on the hardware and there was no mobility. And now all of a sudden you could say, whoa, the hypervisor allows me to separate the operating system, the guest OS, and move it around in my cluster of machines. So I, I have now much more flexibility and the hypervisor to a degree was the first platform uh, that people uh, used in a much more general purpose sense. And then we now starting to see uh, Kubernetes as the next platform. Uh, then people have always looked at databases as platforms or so database as a service has been something that a lot of people have invested time in. And so the whole key thing is that they want to manage one artifact, be that a hypervisor or infrastructure uh, database or something like that, and then ide run ideally as many applications as possible against that artifact. And that makes sense to me. I guess I think of these things also as building things that people build things on top of, right? Like, like you know, like that's that's sort of my simplistic way of of, of thinking. Yeah, about that's, it. that's a good one as well. I think that's that's really a, a key part. But I think there are a couple of attributes. I think it's for builders. The second thing, it, it has to run more than one app, otherwise it's not really a platform. Um, and then it needs to be not complete per se, because there's, um, but it has to have commonality uh, enough so that there are, people can build multiple types or multiple applications on it. Okay, so presumably building something that other people build on is, is different than, or perhaps even harder than just building an app, right? Uh, you're building things. So what I don't understand sort of for, is from the architectural perspective, what do you got to do to build a, a successful platform? Like I know what to do. You know, we've talked about what to build a successful app, right? And we're going to be talking, I'm sure, more about those things. But but what do you, what, what's, what's different about platforms from an architectural perspective? Well, I think before we dive into the architecture perspective, I, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the challenges associated with the concept of a platform. Okay. Uh, and I think, I think if you're willing to indulge me, the challenge that I've actually seen over and over again in my travels with customers is, you know, we'll get to the meeting and the, uh, we'll ha we're having a great technology discussion and the, the C-suite person leans back and says, Eric, I'm not getting a lot of value out of the data platform. I just don't feel like it's actually doing anything for me. 
I know data is going into this enormous data lake and I know I can hire engineers and people to bring uh, unearth the value out of the platform, but I just don't feel it. Um, and then platform owners typically say, yeah, I feel like we spent a lot of time, effort and energy building this amazing platform, whether it's a monolith or microservices based, hypervisor based or container based, but no one's using it. They're all actually going out and in the lines of business and buying their own SaaS solutions or subscribing to completely off strategy cloud platforms and then using those because they say that they're faster and easier. And so before we kind of dive into the architectural components of it, I was thinking that we should probably spend some time talking about how to avoid those pitfalls. How do you actually um, start building a platform that people are going to use and then actually taking it a step further and saying, I actually need to build a platform that people want to use more so than go outside or try doing a bunch of dark IT stuff. Okay, so I'm I'm easy. I'm happy to talk about I'm happy to talk about that aspect before we talk about the how. Like the, to me, the the order isn't isn't crucial here. So um, great. What what is it? What what do you got to do to make a good platform? Uh, I think the first thing is to make sure that you're aware as an architect and a technologist. Um, you certainly need to gather uh, requirements and to understand what this platform needs to be. The best way to think about this, and I've seen the most successful pl organizations implement platforms most successfully, is if they actually treat it like it's a product, that they're building a solution for a line of business. Now, the difficult thing is that you can't over-index. You can't actually build a lock and key solution for line of business. At each point in time, you need to understand what those lines of business or your consumers or your customers need. And then you need to uh, abstract, and this is kind of where the architectural practice comes in, abstract out the common elements that can be shared across those multiple lines of business. The danger is over-indexing and building something that's completely verticalized, but not very useful to another adjacent line of business or the rest of the organization. But managing it in that way allows you to build a automatically, hopefully automatically useful day one piece of software that functions as the platform that multiple lines of business can kind of plug into. Okay. Go ahead, Uli. It looks like you want to say something. Yeah, so the other piece, I wanted to start with a bit more of a controversial statement. First of all, don't build platforms because you can. The best platform you've built is the one you never built. Uh, meaning in the age of cloud, go with as much SaaS as you can, then go with PaaS as you can, and then only if there's differentiated value in a platform element, let's say a database or something like that, that you really feel you can't get from a provider, whoever it might be, then consider a platform. Um, it has to be differentiating. It has to be uh, something that is really common, uh, meaning that, again, coming back to multiple applications want to need to use this, otherwise it makes no sense. And so the best thing is don't build it. If you have to build it, be very clear what are the common attributes that you need and um, why do people, why cannot people, why people cannot use a commercially available uh, platform? Again, especially in age of cloud, um, I think that's, uh, that's the first set of consideration that you should think about. I don't find that particularly controversial um, to, 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 to decide that, but I'm, 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 I'm cool with it as well. I guess the question I have is, as I was listening to both of you talk about it and talk about commonality here and wondering like, I mean, our platform is all about the lowest common denominator. Um, you know, like like how, I mean, when I think about this, are they just like as as lowest common denominator as possible? Is that is does that make a good platform? If congratulations, it's I mean, isn't that an operating system? Like I'm just like, what you know, what's what's going on here that make, that differentiates a platform from an operating system, for example? Well, this is the tricky part. Remember, I think platforms is all about balance, right? The platform itself should never be center stage. The platform itself should actually just exist to be in service to lines of business and, 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 and the, the extraction of value from its utilization. As a result, uh, the best platforms are the ones in which you are, as, as a consumer, you don't really know that it's there. You are consuming some coarse grained API. There's an abstraction layer. You don't have to worry about what happens beneath the platform. But when the platform itself develops a life of its own and we do things for the platform's sake, then we, have, we, we might be drifting out of balance a little bit because now the platform takes on its own life and has its own uh, goals and desires, uh, which may run counter to or make the consumption of the platform services extremely difficult to those lines of business. 
Okay, now I'm going to see if I can elicit a controversial question, and then maybe we'll go to the architecture question. Is a good platform one at which uh, you could bounce out of if you wanted to anytime? Like, what what's the is there value to lock in when you're building a platform from a platform builder perspective or not? Oh boy, this is this is interesting. So Uli, I'll 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 give my brief opinion. So it's multi. This is a multifaceted answer. Okay. So to the people writing the checks to build the platform, they want everybody in the world to use that platform. And if they're not, why? Let's go eradicate those people and get them onto the platform. The platform's not good enough. Let's spend more money to rev the platform. The other approach is, though, instead of tightening your, um, holding on to sand by tightening your fist and watching it slip through your grasp, figure out why people have, uh, have open and honest conversations about why you're not necessarily super excited to use the internal platform and why you are going to the cloud or why you are combining different multi-cloud strategies and associated with your internal platform. And then figure out, is that okay? Can they do it better than we can? And while I get to concentrate on a specific area that no hyperscaler is doing, or you can say, listen, if, if you go there for now, accomplish your business goals, and I'm going to rev my platform to catch up with what you need, and I'm going to add these things on top of it. Yeah, you're, you're already down the path of a commercial offering. I personally think most platforms are actually built inside a specific company. I was with a customer uh, this week uh, where they went down a DevOps path for quite some time where each team decided to build their own database, messaging, everything else. Turns out that there were common choices made, uh, whatever the database was, whatever the messaging system was, doesn't really matter. And it turns out that the DevOps team spend a lot of time maintaining common components like messaging and databases and stuff like that. And so this company then decided to say, wait a second, let's centralize this because we're now seeing um, DevOps teams spending more than 50% of their time maintaining platform-like components for their applications. So let's centralize it. And they evaluated commercially available PaaS services they found them either lacking from a commercial or capability perspective. So they decided to package it up as what they call custom pass. Um, and that's, I think, the majority of platform efforts you will see inside a company. Um, and I think that's also perfectly good. Um, again, they at least did the due diligence, looked at commercial offerings, didn't find them that they would fit whatever the scenario was. So they're now packaging up um, their own capabilities, messaging database, um, as a pass platform. So they call it custom pass. And again, for me, that will be the majority of platforms you will see. There's very few people that will even endeavor building a platform uh, that is commercially viable across multiple clouds and all this other stuff. There are some, and that makes sense, but the majority of platforms is going to be um, in commercial customers where they just need specific capabilities. If you're in retail, you might have specific scenarios that the general purpose things don't support, or if you're in manufacturing, there are specific capabilities you need. Banking always had um, a tendency to build their own platforms because of low latency trading and those kind of things. So there's very specific attributes that drive um, people to build platforms. Um, and again, its majority's focus is going to be internal rather than an external commercial product. I feel like there is so much more to talk about here, but I'm also feeling like this is a nice place to pause. So um, I know there's a ton of other stuff to talk about. Perhaps we'll come back to the platform topic. Perhaps, perhaps we won't. There's lots of stuff in this series to go uh, to talk about. So why don't I just thank the both of you for willing to talk to me and at least opening the conversation with us. And uh, thank, thank everybody for watching.